rabbit here. So I get into some serious gaming. So I invested in um, one of their keyboards. The GGK um, 3.5 mechanical switch. And um, <clears throat> the things with gaming keyboards with mechanical switches, you you can um, get cheap ones, you know, that are basically garbage, and then you can have mid-range, which is this represents that, you know, around sixty dollars, seventy dollars, and then you can you know, sky's the limit when you go upwards. You can spend up to three hundred dollars, but I don't think it's really worth for for me on on the level of you know, like two hundred dollars or something. So the, the, uh, hits a uh, quite a good price point so anyway let's have a look see what we um <coughs> what we get so um it should contain the keyboard and then uh, the support Packed. Oh, that is heavy. Nice protection. Might actually keep that. Keep the dust off of it. CD drives. <laughs> Let's see if I can and then some kind of an instruction manual. I know this has like keyboard shortcut options and stuff, so there's probably all those functions are described in, in this. Well, pretty good box I can separate the plastic from the um, cardboard quite easy, which is nice. Um, so it has two USBs. I wonder if that's for one for power and one for data. So let's see if we can't connect this thing and um, yeah, see what it looks like. So anyway, that's it connected. So um. This is the default color scheme that it runs through, but then you can, according to what I've studied, you can set it up using the software. I actually have to go download this as a file. And then there's possibilities to record macros, so you can actually make keyboard sequences and save it. Yeah, that's <laughs> really. So you can really feel if the key has worked or not. That's the nice thing about mechanical stuff. And they're quite high up. And it's very visible. That's and then this is magnetic, so you can just sort of take it off if you don't want it. It, it actually doesn't take that much space if you leave that off. And then it also it the I think the reason it has two USB connections, it's got a USB hub. So you have a USB output directly on the keyboard. So I think the, probably the one is for um, directly for the keyboard communication, and the other one is to service the other you know, the USB port on the key on the actual keyboard. So let's get this onto the computer and um, see how it works. Skip generation zero. Bit of a try. I haven't played this for a long time, so let's find some enemies we can blow up.
Listen, here they come. Close that door and get ready. It's happening now. There's nothing wrong with the keyboard. It wasn't the keyboard's fault that I was messing up. It was more my own game at home. Lack of, um, yeah, I haven't been playing this for a while. So lack of um, experience. Anyway, I think I could uh, recommend this keyboard. Then it works fine for what I need it for. So if you like this um, review, then please consider subscribing. Hit the like button. Merch is available if you know, or you can just buy a cup of coffee. Links are in the description and yeah, that was that was actually worth worth the money, but I must say I need to practice a bit in the game you know, on, on this game to be able to be better again. I've always when one dumps things for a while and one, one kinda loses it. So anyway, don't go yet. Uh, if you want to hang around for some details then here they come. So the actually included two um two um yeah notifications in the package and um one of them is to um how to control the lighting on the keyboard like manually and then the other one is a very brief instruction about the main functions of the software which is included here and I can actually not locate the website uh, at least not easily on, on Google, so I'm going to have to extract the program from or install it from the disk. And um, since CD drives kind of died, I had to I had to borrow this again. So some of you might have seen this on previous videos. The emergency backup solution for needing to read read CD ROMs. So, so I'll get that installed, and then we can have a look at the software. At first, I just thought we'd look at some of the um, keyboard functions. How you control the lighting directly. So, let's try and adjust the <coughs> wave mode. So that would be... It's this one. And then F6. And then... One should be able to adjust it with... 
these keys. I got a little bit different types of. <coughs> It like speed or just want to just for a wave like roll in a desired direction. Okay, then page up and page down for speed. And then you press Q to finalize. Or it actually didn't say that, but I'm assuming that's what one does. And then, of course, the other. <coughs> other settings go pretty much the same way. It's a combination of Q and then the uh, function key. Let's see if there would be another one, but I would like to. Uh, Q F6. Yeah. <laughs> you get that kind of a form. Now there is also the option to set all the keys to be permanent, steady mode, QF11. Q. So then you get a constant color and then... Yeah, it's changing color and then you can actually lock it in place by QF11. And then the brightness can be adjusted Q plus minus. It has to be in the in that mold. So it goes and that'll be white. And then Q oh, I can't really understand this song. Um, if you're supposed to press Q and minus to dim them and then plus to make it brighter, I really can't get that to work. But ever how combination I try. Anyway, but I got the steady mode to work, that's quite easy. You just and then you select what color you want to have and then you should theoretically by pressing that and those to be able to fix the brightness but I can't I can't get that to work okay that mystery solved now probably very hard to see you see this kind of like an extra function color you see it there. That's like plus and minus. And they get activated if one presses this one here. So it gets dimmer and that gets brighter. Hmm. I could be an aspect of internationalization. So in the manual, in the in this little leaflet it says um, very clearly that it's the plus and minus but or one would understand from reading this so you have plus and minus. 
plus and minus. And that might be that this has an American layout, then it might be that you have plus and minus up there. I can't remember if you have a pure US keyboard. But now when it's an internationalized keyboard. But anyway, it seems to be that the, this one here activates all these vaguely there's uh, for volume control and you know, advancing stuff and, and then some other function, probably for the micro macro function. Out. So anyway, that's uh, yeah. So you can make it either steady or you can have this waveform. Or what did it have? <laughs> Let's see. You can put wave, scan mode, counter clash mode, ripple mode, marquee mode, raindrop mode, breath mode, <laughs> steady, steady mode, and oh, look, user defined color patterns also. So there's quite a lot of different things to choose from. No, I say we move on to um, get the software up and running and see what that looks like. So anyway, here's the. CD now loaded. Gig, gig, GGK 3.5 driver. So let's see if we can run this. This is an easier way to um, control the keyboard, and you should be able to set up. Let's see. So here you can just select all the different modes. Wave function. And choose what. No, it's not activating on the keyboard. You have to hit the block. Yep, oh, there you go. So, yeah. And then here you have this um, gaming mode, a little bit of a reaction time. Yeah, you can set the response time, report rate. You could set up individual profiles also. <clears throat> like if you have different games and stuff, then you can set up different profiles. Windows key lock on and off. And then micromanagement. Ah, then you can just record. So micro one, then you can just say. whatever combination of keys and then OK so now you have created a micro one and then you can activate it through the, on the keyboard I don't really know how that was supposed to work I think it's these ones here so you press the Q and then the individual button let's see if we can simulate this Okay, not ah, yeah, intuitive enough, I suppose. But um, in the micro management, you just set up the micro. You say new. Mi you couldn't actually rename that to something else. So I'll just double click on it. So you create a new one. Then you give the you type in the keystrokes. You. Um, Define a delay if you want. You can define how many times it loops. And then you just save this so that, that we did already. And then you, uh, <coughs> what you should do is you need to select a key. And then it's a default here. Then you need to go to micro. And it'll display all the micros you have. And then you can click on which one you want to activate. And then you save it. And then you have to press apply also. So now when I go into here into notepad and I press F1 then I actually don't get the function of F1 I get um, yeah it 
I just re uh, re repeated the recorded key process that I made. That's that how that works, and I'm assuming one can just disable it by um, doing a reset. Yep. So now and then I apply, and now when I go into here and press F1, then it actually yeah now it's bringing up a help. <laughs> the help for, for Notepad <laughs> in the browser. So anyway, that's how that works. Anything else that would be of... Yeah, and then the, there seems to be lots of like potential adjustments here. Single, combine, you can combine it with other... then the micro function and then the basic... And then there's uh, like media media control mappings, mappings to folders. I think Internet Explorer. You can disable keys. Yeah. Uh, okay. Then you can map to things like open a file or a folder, or startup. So you can actually, <laughs> yeah, you can <coughs> have fun and reprogram the keyboard.